the keto diet was the most Googled diet of 2018. But a new study sounding the alarm on diets like keto and Atkins and paleo suggesting low carb might actually be hazardous to your health. And this is news to Dr. Oz. We brought him here. We didn't tell him why. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> You've been researching this. Are we going to survive the keto diet? We are. Well, you know, keto, paleo, these are the most searched diets on the internet. Yeah. We cover them on the show all the time. But it hasn't been studied well from a general health perspective. We know people lose weight, especially some folks. If, you're, if your body looks like a square or a brick, then you tend to lose weight on these diets because it changes your internal hormones. But this important study from the American College of Cardiology, one of the first of its kind, looked at 13,000 people who were not in this irregular heartbeat called AFib. And it found that when you had less carbohydrates in your diet, you seem right. to have more atrial fibrillation. Let me just explain what that is. I have an animation real quickly showing okay. you what the heart looks like when it's beating normally, and then we're going to transition to the AFib. And it's like, see, the left side is normal. The, the yeah. top part of the heart's beating and contracting. Oh, my goodness. It's like a fuel injector. On the right side, the heart's beating like a, like a bag of worms. And the problem with that is the blood accumulates and forms clots. And atrial fibrillation, therefore, five times increases the chance of you having a stroke. Oh, my goodness. Because when there's clout in the heart, it throws it. I, I don't know what's more ridiculous. The amount of fat Dr. Oz injected into his cheeks or the bloating that he is experiencing from his high-carbohydrate diet. It is hysterical how quickly these people want to grab onto any study whatsoever to talk negatively about a ketogenic diet. This goes to show how afraid they are of people realizing that what they've been told their entire lives is wrong. Seeing as the study hasn't actually been published yet, it's not actually an official study. But let's entertain the idea that it is because why else would Frankie Boy be here? Problem number one is the method used to collect the data. Participants were asked to report their daily intake of 66 different food items in a questionnaire. Questionnaires are not a reliable method of data collection. Problem number two is the dosage. Is the dosage, how much of whatever substance we're using, an accurate representation of what humans would actually be doing? Researchers then divided participants into three groups representing low, moderate, and high carbohydrate intake. Reflecting diets in which carbohydrates comprised less than 44.8% of daily calories, 44.8 to 52.4% of calories, and more than 52.4% of calories, respectively. This is way off, considering a ketogenic diet is supposed to be 5% or less of your calories from carbohydrates. These people were literally consuming 10 times the amount of carbohydrates they're supposed to consume, and these people are salivating over this study. Problem number three is relative risk. Relative risk is a measurement used in the study to determine whether a study should be looked into further or not. A relative risk of one means that there is no positive or negative correlation, but a relative risk needs to be at least two, maybe three, to see a hypothetical scenario in which you need to do further research into the correlation. Participants were 18% more likely to develop AFib than those with moderate carbohydrate intake and 16% more likely to develop AFib than those with high carbohydrate intake. This percentage would indicate a relative risk of 1.16 to 1.18. Any person with any credibility in epidemiology whatsoever would dismiss this study at the drop of a hat. A relative risk below 2.0 is not considered adequate to warrant further studies because it does not allow for confounding factors in the lifestyle, ranging from exercise to drug use, obesity, whatever it may be. That's like me saying Italian men are more likely to be well endowed, but the reality of that is along the lines of Italian ladies being some real keto sausage lovers for thousands of years. See? Confounding factors. Now the absolute risk is the actual percent chance that you would get AFib. But you can't actually apply this percent increased risk of AFib to this absolute risk because it's not a credible study. 2% of people in the United States have AFib and over 65 years of age that number goes up to 9%. But the worldwide number for AFib is 0.5%. 
maybe Americans should quit listening to TV stations for dietary advice. What's crazy is that AFib would actually be improved by a ketogenic diet under the constituent that you lose weight. Losing weight has been shown to improve AFib symptoms drastically. I don't think anybody knew about that. So many people have talked about the keto diet. If you're unfamiliar with it, we've got a chart that shows you the keto diet is uh, about 20% protein, fish, grass-fed beef, uh, beans, legumes, 75% healthy fats like avocados, coconut, stuff like that, and 5% carbs. It really limits the number of carbs. But Dr. Oz, you and I have talked about this. I was on the keto diet for a while, and I had a headache that <laughs> would not ever go away. And then I wound up switching out of it. Well, uh, there are a lot of folks who have a little bit of a malaise around it. You, you get very irritable. People are not in a What are you mood. talking about? What? You get hang it's not even hangry. You just can't deal with low insulin, low, sh low sugar levels. Your body needs more sugar. Part of the reason we go for comfort food is it makes us feel good. Yeah. When you have zero of that stuff, you feel the opposite of good. Blood sugar levels actually regulate on a ketogenic diet. Arguing that the reason you're irritable is because your insulin is low makes absolutely zero sense in this context. You're comparing a ketogenic diet where you have a more stable blood glucose level to a standard American diet that is focused around carbohydrates, taking your blood glucose levels on a roller coaster ride. And I think most people act irritable and irregular regardless of whether they're on a ketogenic diet or not. Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. People can't function until they get their morning sugar injection. Let's be real. Most people act irritable and unreasonable in normal circumstances. He also mentioned no comfort food on keto. No, there's just no grain-based, high sugar, high carbohydrate, refined garbage on keto. I think that's what you actually meant to say. He has the nerve to say that you feel the opposite of good when you don't eat these foods. I think Dr. Oz will be starting his career as a comedian sometime in the near future. And then the question becomes, well, is it okay long term? Beats me, Doc. All I know is I've been eating meat for only seven years and that the standard American diet has ruined the health of practically every single American there is. So wouldn't any other diet be better than it? And because it's out there in such a big way, we, you know, some people are beginning to look at it. This is fascinating because it begs the issue why. It's not just about being in a bad mood. What is it about super low carb diets that might be dangerous? And here's the deal. When you get rid of all your carbs, you often get rid of some of the produce. Well, produce is really important for your gut. It feeds the right bacteria. It actually creates a calmness in your intestines, reduces inflammation. When you replace the, car the carbs with fatty foods, you know, the lard, butter, Right, the, the, the unhealthy fats. A lot of ghee. Like a lot of ghee, right? G H E E. Then you end up with pro inflammatory hormones and conditions. So inflammation leads to irregular heartbeats because it irritates the heart muscle. The muscle itself becomes right. swollen. So I mean, I would love to speak out my ass and appeal to authority, but unfortunately, I don't have the words doctor in front of my name. So that's not going to cut it in the wild west of YouTube nutrition. So produce is supposed to be good for your gut and reduce inflammation. Technically, yes, there are beneficial mechanisms shown in studies that demonstrate this. But if Dr. Oz said that off the top of his head, I would go on a vegan diet. But wait, hold on. Why is there inflammation in the first place? Probably because you've been stuffing your face full of those grains that have been proven to raise inflammatory markers in the blood. Lard and butter are unhealthy? Fat causes inflammation? Is that why most interventions showed either no or minor effects of dietary fat intake on inflammatory markers in overweight and obese subjects? And here's another study emphasizing the importance of food quality as opposed to demonizing fat. We have presented evidence that the types of foods consumed and the overall dietary pattern followed are far more important for reducing cardiovascular disease risk than total fat. Also, the types of fat and carbohydrates and more relevantly, the type of food supplying these nutrients are more important than the total amounts of fats and carbohydrates in the diet. This is important to note because higher quality animal products will have more favorable fatty acid ratios, i.e. grass-fed beef, pasture-raised meats. He also mentioned that inflammation leads to irregular heartbeats, 
But if that's the case, then why does reducing carbohydrates improve all inflammatory markers? Reducing carbohydrate content in the diet exhibited greater improvement in markers of inflammation such as insulin sensitivity, B cell function, oxidative stress, lipid peroxidation, and inflammatory cytokines, all things associated with heart health. What this study is essentially saying is that going on a ketogenic diet will improve the health of your heart. What the diet should we go for? I actually think the diets that your, your, your colleague in arms, Steve, and I have talked about is the best one. It's called the Pegan diet. If it's the paleo, marries the vegan diet. So that means, A, you can be with around other people because the biggest problem... You get problem to eat meat. You get to eat some meat. You can replace one of the three servings of you know, vegetables with some meat so you can be sociable because the biggest problem with a good diet is you get lonely because your friends are out there having right. a great time. You can't. But the other thing is that's much more uh, closely mimics the Mediterranean diet, the diet that had the longest track mm -hmm. record, thousands of years, people eating food that's relatively balanced, colorful fruits and vegetables. You can have healthy, fast, the olive oils of the world. Hummus, you can have some Greek meat, salads. but not too much of Greek salads. Mm -hmm. And people just tend to live a long time with these right. kinds of diets. And don't get Weight Watchers. Oprah is a friend of yours. You want to? I actually that. love Weight Watchers, and yeah. I and I really do love what the what they're doing with WW, making it you know healthy and and more about right. your broader life. But it fundamentally, you have to find a diet that is balanced because your body will tell if yeah. you can't. You mean fair and balanced? Yes, fair and balanced. Okay. You know, such a good brand Thank idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Thanks, Dr. Oz. We'll be right. watching you later today. Right. Pegan diet. Uh oh, sounds an awful like plant based. I wonder who's writing these big fat broccoli checks. Colorful fruits and vegetables? Sounds like kids who like eating crayons. Olive oil, healthy fats, Greek salads. Take a visit to Icaria, Greece or Sardinia, Italy. These blue zones that these people spout on so much about in regards to their life expectancy, they don't eat Greek salads. They're eating saturated fat from animal products. The reason that these people are so healthy is the food quality. And what's so contradictory here is they actually eat more animal products than Americans do. They're drinking raw sheep milk straight from the animal, not pasteurized, homogenized supermarket crap. The fish are wild, fresh, straight from the ocean every day. They grow vegetables in their gardens free of pesticides and herbicides. But hey, we have to be afraid of the ketogenic diet, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is, as I said in my video yesterday about de Blasio and Meatless Mondays, this is them repackaging the USDA guidelines dietary bullshit of grains, fruits, and vegetables being healthy because they are losing money. I'm 100% sure they are already losing an incredible amount of money on sugar, carbohydrate-based foods, refined foods, processed foods, because people are kind of waking up a slight bit. You can only make people so unhealthy for such a long period of time. But if you push in a plant-based agenda, and I think people will buy into a plant-based diet for a period of time, but I think this is a temporary fix for them. You know, maybe this will work for a couple of years. Who knows how long it will work, but your health deteriorates incredibly quickly when you remove most animal foods from your diet. So who knows? Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, share the video if you can. Down below is my Amazon shop, bunch of nutrient dense products, vitamin D3 supplements, things like that. My Patreon is a great way to support me as well as get personalized one-on-one -on -one question support. I'm on Twitter, guys. I'm on Instagram. If you do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health, you can shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com, or you can reach out to me via the contact form on my website below, frank-tufano.com. On that website is also some hygiene products, my deodorant, tooth powder, hair pomade, moisturizing cream, things I use in my day-to-day -day life that are an improvement from, as we said earlier, supermarket crap. That being said, you guys enjoy the rest of your week.